Hey friends, welcome back to my channel or if it's your first time visiting, thank you for clicking. Today we are going to do exactly what I said in the title and jump into this review for this Beatles 12 piece uh, gel polish or gel liner set. I did receive this one on the Amazon Prime special and I think I paid less than $1.50. So this is what I did last night, just kind of playing around with the colors and I really wanted to kind of incorporate it to a full set. Sorry about the camera moving. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these off. I'll show you how I do so, so that way you can see how you can kind of change your set to something else. But let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so first I'm gonna go ahead and take this Volcano bit. This one is gonna be at like an eight to 10,000 RPM. And I am right-handed, so I have that in forward. I'm gonna lightly walk this across like the cuticle line and then take that down the remainder of the nail just so I can make sure to remove all of the gel polish and top coat that I had previously. I did also want to mention that I went ahead and grabbed my dust collector. When you're doing this, if you don't have a mask or proper ventilation, it can be extremely bad for your lungs, even if you don't necessarily smell it. I recommend that you do use some type of protection for those, whether it be a really, really good mask or like here, this is just a really cheap dust collector. It was like $20 on Amazon, but something like this will at least get rid of the dust that's floating around and any of those particles from getting into your lungs. But I'll go ahead and show what I'm doing here, and then we'll just jump into what we're doing next, because I'm going to repeat the same thing on every single nail. Once we are done with that, I will go in with one of my armor bands, and this one is just a fine or medium grit. And you'll walk that around the cuticle line too. This is going to get any of the new growth at the cuticle area. It's also going to push that back and make it really clean. So if you were going to do a fill, this would be your very first step. If you're interested on how to do a fill with Gel X, I actually have a video previous to this one that will show you three different methods. All of them are super easy and beginner friendly and they last really long. But in this video, I'm not gonna actually do the full method. I'm just gonna show you kind of how we get to a clean slate for the nail art. After I was done with all the filing, I went ahead and washed my hands really good, and this is what it should look like. We went ahead and took all of the products down, cleaned up that cuticle line really, really well, and then blended the tip into the natural nail or where it was growing out from. Because I'm not going to do a full peel, I'm just going to take my gel base coat, and I'm going to put that at the cuticle line. As you can see here, since it's blended really well, there's not much that I have to do. Again, though, if you wanted to, you can totally feel before this, but using the Cooper gel base coat, it's a little bit sticky, and additional, it's going to be a pretty thick base coat, so it's going to fill in any of the filing marks that are maybe still remaining on the nail before I actually go in with any product. And then once that comes out of a 60 second cure, this is what that will look like. Again, I only have like a week's worth of growth and because I blended it, there's not much to do. But I did want to kind of tie in all the colors I had on that thumbnail from playing with the colors yesterday. So I decided to take some neon colors here. I don't end up using all the colors that I choose, but I wanted to make sure to have them down and ready. And that's one of the best tips I can give is always to have more than you actually need. So if you are gonna have any clients or even if you're working on your own nails and you're unsure, just having those colors in front of you to kind of help with creativity aspect or if you change your mind last minute, which you'll see later on, I do quite a lot. It's good to at least have those ready. 
Okay, so here I'm just cleaning my brush because I know I'm going to use it to clean up around the cuticles. And I'm kind of uh, like in between on design at this point. So I just want to make sure again that I have everything ready that I may need so I'm not looking around. And I decided on the pointer finger that I was going to do kind of an ombre. Um, so not as drastic as the one on the thumb, but something with like green at the tip and then yellow that it will ombre into. So I'm going to show you how I do that here with gel polish. Now, this is not my favorite method. I do have a method that I like a lot better and it's on my last video where I did the flames. Um, that baby boomer is so much easier and it's done with pigments or it can be done with eyeshadow. If you are going to do this method though, you are going to need like a little brush. They do sell ombre brushes. I haven't found one that I recommend. So instead what I do is I have a little bit of acetone in a dish and I'll use that to thin out where it should be fading into the natural nail and then I'll cure that. And I'm gonna repeat the same steps. I'm just gonna have to do multiple layers of the two colors with thinning out with acetone in between. That way it ends up ombre together. But again, this is not my preferred method and it does take a little bit longer. And then finally, once you're done doing like three or four layers, this is kind of what it will look like. Again, it's not perfect, but it kind of is workable if you are going to be doing like I am and putting art over it. Um, if this is going to be like a standard pink and white baby boomer or an ombre that you want without any type of art over it. Again, do not do this method. This is just something to put a base down that looks decent underneath some nail art. I went ahead and then used this fanciest, like very, very sheer pink. And I put it over the entire nail for two reasons. One is I definitely don't want it just to be a clear tip at the top. So this will give it like a healthy pink color. But because it's so sheer and it just has a tiny amount of pigmentation, I'm going to go ahead and carry that down the entire nail and that will fix any of the minor imperfections of the ombre that you just did and make it look just a little bit more seamless. Okay, once that's fully cured, I'm gonna take that same brand um, and instead of using that sheer pink, I'm gonna go one shade deeper. This is still on trend with like that jelly type of color that's very sheer. Um, but instead of it being like a baby pink, this is more neutral and I'm going to do two coats of this color on the middle nail um, Just because I was kind of in between but I do end up doing a Frenchie so that you can see how well the liners actually perform at perfecting that smile line Then I'm gonna take this color here, which is like a really really true neon orange and I'm gonna paint the entire ring finger with this color it's absolutely beautiful. You are gonna to wanna to use two coats though, and the brand is McCart. And then I'm gonna also use a true neon lime green on the ring finger, and we're gonna keep that one pretty simple. All right, so this is what everything looks like now that we've been fully cured, and it is time to move on with the fun part. So today I wanted to show what I got for Amazon Prime Day. I happened to get this Beatles 12 piece liner set and I got it for less than $1.50. So I just had to. They look really good. I already practiced with some on my thumb. I know I cheated, <laughs> um, but I had to make sure that it was going to be worth me making an entire video on. Um, they were either going to be like super amazing or they just were not going to be good. And these ones, I must say, spoiler, they are awesome. As long as you are not allergic to any ingredients like Hema, then you will be perfectly fine. These do contain Hema, which is known to be a very high allergen in some people. So just be very careful. And then you're gonna wanna do a cure of 60 to 90 seconds is what it says on the back of the box. Although I did 30 to 60, just depending on how much art there was. Um, but this is what the box looks like when you receive it. This is how I got it with all the colors lined up really, really pretty. 
and I just wanted to show exactly how I received it before we got into actually working with them. Before moving into any art, I made sure to top coat all nails. And then I'm gonna go in with this shade, which is the red shade. It is called High Risk, and it is really, really bright and beautiful. So taking this shade here, I am gonna go ahead on the pointer finger or your index finger and just draw a little swoosh. <laughs> um, what i learned when using these is if you are going to be using them for line art like this you kind of want to do it just in one motion um so you don't kind of smear the product or make it look like you picked anything up if that makes sense so i do it in one motion and then i went in on the bottom just to kind of further thicken the bottom of that line and i'm going to go ahead and cure this to get on to the next step I then go ahead and take the orange shade called Orange Popsicle and I'm going to use that right next to the red shade and do the exact same motion that I did with the last one. So making that swoop kind of just in one line or in one motion so you're not picking up any more product and it's thinning out at the tip. But I kept this real time so you can see. I do take my time and they came out beautiful. The line that you can get from this can go super duper thin as you can see here and I love it. But I'm gonna go ahead and go in the bottom too. Make sure to thicken this line a little bit. Fill in anywhere that maybe I didn't touch by the red before curing it and moving on to the next step. For some reason, my camera didn't pick up what I did next, but I did do a yellow line right next to the orange, and then I took this Savvy Land paint pot and one of my dotting tools. I'm so sorry, I use it often, so it's a little dirty, but you're gonna wanna put the five little dots and then drag them in, and I kinda wanted to do that to tie in with the thumbnail again. I'll show you how I do it because I do it again on the ring finger, um, but that's all I did there. So next I went ahead and took that raspberry color, which is like the hot flamingo type of pink, and I used it to do a Frenchie on the middle nail just so I can check to make sure I liked how it did that because more than likely that's what i'm going to use these for is helping with line work more than just actual artwork so i do it by putting a guideline right down the center of the nail and then i kind of make like a curved y shape up to the point that i want to take it to after you've made the smile line that you want, then you can go ahead and fill in the color. I'm just going to use the same color here and make sure that everything is nice and smooth. And I have to say, these worked awesome for everything that I've done so far. I went ahead and cured everything for 30 seconds and then I took this blue color and I'm going to use this to further outline that Frenchie just to make it a little bit more precise and I wanted to see how well they layer on top of each other. So I'm going to go in here and just show how I did that. But I pretty much started right at the bottom of that smile line in the center and then pulled outwards so that the product would thin as it got towards the higher part of the arch and then it was thickest at the bottom. And after curing for 30 seconds, it looks like this. For some reason, I lost some of the footage, but I did go ahead and end up putting a little like golden teddy bear. Because of the pink background on the French, you can't really tell too much, but he's kind of like translucent and has like a pink and gold shift to him. So I put that right on the French so that way it wouldn't be too plain and then flash cured it. Next, going in with this pretty like navy blue or royal blue, I'm going to take that to the orange finger um, just so that there's some type of contrast. And we're gonna do the same steps that we did on the pointer finger, but doing it from the opposite start point. So it's gonna be thickest at the cuticle line and then one swoop down again so it thins out. And we'll repeat this with three different shades. 
and then after curing this is what that nail will look like i am going to go in now and show how i do those little white flowers so i'm going to be taking my savvy land white gel polish this one was in its own review if you're interested in these and they are a dupe that i find that's similar to the young nails mission control paint pots so i recommend these as well um the beetles kit that i got doesn't include a white or a black so i did have to use this but essentially all you're going to do is go in with a dotting tool you'll put five little dots and then from there you'll use the opposite side of the tool which mine ends up being like a little brush but if yours isn't double ended just use a really tiny liner brush and you'll pull the product from those dots into the center and that will create the look of a like little flower and they're super cute and easy to do. Finally, we're moving on to our pinky finger and I'm gonna take this really sharp cuticle bit and my e-drill and we're gonna go ahead and drill two small holes on the side of the finger so that we can place piercings into it. You wanna be extremely careful when you do this. It's really sharp and you are using pressure to get through the nail. Um, so here, like you've seen, it goes through really quickly. So we'll do two of them right next to each other. And then once those are done, I just clean up a little bit and make sure that they are clear of any debris before putting any type of jewelry into them. Since this set was all over the board in all kinds of colors, I did use one silver and one gold hoop. Here I am putting the silver one in, and then next we'll go ahead and place the gold one. The gold one is a little bit smaller than the silver, and I thought that complemented each other. But with these little hoops, you're going to use your tweezers. If you are struggling like I was here, I'm going to show you a tip on how to open it. So you can hold one side with tweezers and then using instead of your fingers, just something small. It can be like um, the tip like here that I used was from the tool earlier, but you want to use something small enough to get inside to kind of pry it open and then you can place the jewelry on and you should be able to close it with your hand if not you can also use your tweezers to pinch it tightly next i'm going to go ahead and take this diamond gel this is a two-in-one so it's a really thick tempered top coat and it's also an adhesive for rhinestones it is by enel couture and i'm going to take the smallest size stones here these were just from amazon but just to kind of liven up the set i'm gonna paint this on again it is already thick but i like to put a pretty decent coat and then using the back side of my tool i'm using the dotting end and i'm gonna place some really tiny stones on both the index and the ring finger and then i'll cure that all together for 60 seconds now this is what it'll look like once you are done I did think that the pinky looked a little too plain, so I go in again with that diamond gel and I am gonna place a bigger stone right near the cuticle line. And this is the final look. If you have any questions or comments, I am always open to reading them. Please feel free to like, subscribe, and share. I thank you for clicking on my video today. Until next time, friends, bye. Say, I'm still a wiggle. Rapping key low